Good morning, students. Before we start with our first chapter, let us have a quick review on some basic things. See, we are all made up of cells. When we were being formed inside our mother's womb, we all have started our life from a single cell, an egg. A lot of cells comes together to form a tissue. What did I say? A lot of cells comes together to form a tissue. What kind of cells? Cells performing similar kind of function. For example, our eye cell. Our eye cell are capable, are designed only to see. They cannot hear, they cannot taste the food you are having. So, cells performing similar kind of function forms a tissue. Several tissue comes together, they combine to form an organ. Several organs combine to form an organ system. Several organ system comes together to form an organism. So cells, tissue, organ, organ system, organism. Several organisms are working together as an unit to keep our body functioning. Now what are these organ systems? They are, they may be excretory system, the tissue system, the skeletal system, uh, the reproductive system, the nervous system. In today's class, we are going to learn about the circulatory system. Now see, the circulatory system is made up of the uh, blood, the blood vessels and heart. Now, in the human body, like in, in our human body, there are some kinds of fluids circulating. This fluid constitute the distributing system, that is um, the supply system, as well as the collecting system to pick up substances from various parts of our body. Now, what are these fluids? They are blood, tissue and limb. Uh, tissue and limb you will slowly learn in your higher classes. Um, in this chapter we are going to concentrate on blood. Before we come to blood, let us first see why is there a need of transport system in our body? Why do we need the circulatory system? So we know that we are made up of several organ systems and each organ system involves the requirement of this circulatory fluid. Let's have a look. Digestive system. Digestive system digests and absorbs nutrients which are needed to be transported to every cell, even at the most distant places, the farthest cell of your brain. Next, respiratory gases involved very much with exchange of air, oxygen and carbon dioxide, which is particularly done by the circulatory fluid. See, it draws in air and the oxygen picked up from it in the lungs has to be transported to all parts of our body. Next, all the extra water, excess salts and nitrogenous waste such as urea have to be removed from different parts. We sweat, right? So this is what he said and have to be sent to the excretory system to be thrown out. So all such functions that need transport are performed by two circulatory fluid which involves the blood and the limb regarding limb you will learn about it in the later in your higher classes now we are going to learn we are going to know what is blood okay now let us learn what is blood as per the definition blood is a fluid connective tissue fluid because it flows throughout our system. Connective, it is connecting all parts of our body. And tissue, when I say tissue, that means the blood is composed of various other cells, which includes the RBC or the red blood cells, WBC or white blood cells and platelets. Now, all these cells have their own function. When I said RBC, uh, that means red blood cell, it is responsible for carrying oxygen. White blood cells, uh, they are responsible, like they form the main constituent of our immune system and they fight against the uh, disease which intrude our system. And platelet, it is responsible for blood clotting. 
I have mentioned the three different types of body fluid present in us. The blood, the tissue fluid and the limb. Now see, these three fluids are different from one another. That means they have their own characteristics. Let us check the characteristic of blood. First point, blood is not a stationary fluid. It keeps on circulating in, in, through our, in, in our system. You get a cut in your hand, you get a cut on your leg. The blood is the first thing that oozes out from your system. But if you keep a small amount of blood in a dish, like in the room temperature, you will see that the blood clots. It is no more fluid. So the blood, when present inside our system, it is never stationary. It is circulating. Next, we come to its color. Blood is uh, bright red in color. Which type of blood is bright red in color? The oxygenated blood. What is an oxygenated blood? Oxygenated blood is that type of blood which contains comparatively more amount of oxygen in it. So oxygenated blood is bright red in color. It is also dark red in color. Which type of blood? The deoxygenated blood, the opposite of oxygenated blood. So deoxygenated blood is that type of blood which contains comparatively less amount of oxygen. Now we come to its taste. Our blood tastes slightly saltish due to the sodium ions present in us. Now we will learn about the functions of blood. First, it transports digested food. How? It transports digested food from the alimentary canal to the tissues, to the body tissues. The end products of digested food are then absorbed by the intestine and then they are put into the blood circulation. And this is how we get energy from our food that we eat. Then it helps in the transport of excretory material. Now how is it doing that? It takes the excretory materials from the body tissues to the liver, kidney or the skin from where these waste or the unwanted substances or toxics are removed from our body. Then it helps in the transport of oxygen uh, from the lungs to the tissue. Now who is helping in this process? You already know about it. It was stated before the red blood cells or the RBC. Okay. The common term that we use in our, in our science subject for RBC or red blood cell is the erythrocyte. Please note it down, erythrocyte. Then it helps in the transport of carbon dioxide. How? It helps in the transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs from where it is again given out. Then it helps in the distribution of heat. The blood helps in keeping the temperature of the body uniform by distributing the heat. Then it provides protection from disease causing germs. Now you know who is doing that. They are the WBCs or white blood cells. Like RBC, uh, we call it erythrocyte. Similarly, we have a, a unique norm, a name for WBC or white blood cell, which is called leukocytes. Cytes means cell and leuco means white so from this term we 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 know we we come to know that white white blood cells are white in color see leukocytes leuco means white and cytes means cell so they are the white cells similarly erythrocytes erythro means red cytes means cell so these are the red cells next Blood provides protection from disease causing germs like I already said and then it helps in blood clotting. Now you know who, which, which particular uh, cell of the blood is the platelets. Now we will talk about the next component of our circulatory system. It is the blood vessels. Now what are these blood vessels? Blood vessels are branched tubes extended from the heart to all parts of our body. See, they are branched tubes. The structure itself is giving us a clear idea on the function that it performs. Why branched tubes? Because you remember I have mentioned that the, the circulatory fluid or the fluids needs, needs 
to reach every part of our body. So they are all branched, you know, they are projected out so that it reaches all parts of our body. Now, these blood vessels are of three types, namely the artery, veins and the capillaries. Now we will see the difference between these three types of blood vessels. Now, let's see what is an artery. Artery is a vessel which carries blood away from the heart to all parts of the body. That means from the heart, it carries blood from the heart to all parts of the body. Now that you know the difference between the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood, let me say it to you. Arteries are responsible for carrying oxygenated blood. But there is an exception. There is one particular artery which does not carry oxygenated blood. It is the pulmonary artery. Please note it down. It is the pulmonary artery. You will learn about it. Like I'll, I'll introduce you. I'll introduce it to you later when we are learning about the circulation. But for the time being, just keep this in mind. Arteries are blood vessels which are responsible for carrying the oxygenated blood. That means it carries blood from the heart, from the heart to all parts of our body, excluding the pulmonary artery. Now, the artery has certain characteristic of its own, you know, looking at which we can say this is an artery, this is a vein, this is a capillary. So let us learn about the characteristics of artery. Arteries are, have thick muscular walls. You can, you can see the picture. Arteries have thick muscular wall, a narrow lumen. Lumen, the, the circular part that is being shown. See that the circle is small. So it is narrow and blood in it flows with jerk. This can be very easily explained. You can, if you, if you look at the picture, see, you can yourself understand. For example, you take a bottle. See, the circle is small. So, when I pour the water down, see, this, the, you can hear the sound even. When I pour the water down, the water will flow with a rush because of the small circle that it is have, having. Similar thing happens to our arteries as well this is the reason the the lumen being small the new the lumen being narrow the blood in it flows with a jerk next let's come to vessel a uh, vein vein are those blood vessels which convey the blood from a part of the body towards the heart now like arteries are responsible for carrying oxygenated blood veins are responsible for carrying deoxygenated blood. Uh, you remember the difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood? Oxygenated blood are uh, those blood which contains comparatively more amount of oxygen and deoxygenated blood are those blood that contains comparatively less amount of oxygen. So veins are those blood vessels which conveys blood from a part of the body towards the heart like pulmonary artery is an exception similarly there is an exception to our vein section also the the only vein which carries oxygenated blood and not the normal deoxygenated blood is the pulmonary vein i'll again let you know when we are learning about the circulation of the heart so just keep a note pulmonary vein is the exception which uh, which do not carry deoxygenated blood. It is responsible for carrying oxygenated blood unlike other veins. Now, there are certain characteristics of veins as well. Let us look into it. Veins have thin muscular walls. Look into the picture. You can see it. They have thin muscular walls. Wider lumen. Now, have a note on the circle. See, in case of artery, it, it is small, it is narrow, but it, when it comes to vein, it is wider. So, blood flows uniformly in it. Now, this can be easily explained. You take water in a bucket, pour it down, you see the water will flow smoothly. Why? Because the opening of the bucket is bigger. Now, let's come to capillaries. Capillaries are also blood vessels, but they are narrow 
tubed blood vessels and they are made up of single layer uh, single layered cell they are very thin they're very thin now what uh, the the functions of capillaries include they allow the outward diffusion of oxygen they allow inward diffusion of carbon dioxide and the most important function they allow wbc or white blood cells or leukocytes you know by now okay they allow these white blood cells to squeeze out from their walls so i repeat the functions include they allow outward diffusion of oxygen they allow inward diffusion of carbon dioxide and they allow the wbc's to squeeze out from their walls now let us learn about heart see there is a common belief uh, that heart is present in the left side but there is nothing like that the heart is very much present in between the two lungs above the diaphragm a part of the heart is directed towards our left side so when we walk that is when the heartbeat Uh, you know the contraction of the heart like there is a there is a rapid heart beat so a part of the heart being present on the left side gives us a feeling that the heart is on the left side but there is nothing like this the heart is not on the left side of the chest it is right in the center between the two lungs and above the diaphragm the narrow end of the roughly triangular heart is pointed or it is towards the left side and during work the contraction of the heart gives a feeling that it is present in the left so the heart is present inside the rib cage why inside the rib cage like the function of the rib cage it protects the heart the heart is a very delicate organ so the rib cage is basically protecting our heart from any mechanical injury now there is a trick we can very much know the size of our own heart how you can you can look at the size of your fist you know the your hand fist when you measure it like whatever it is like when you measure it this is the size of your heart this is how we can figure out easily now the heart has a covering on itself the covering is called pericardium i repeat the covering of the heart is called pericardium this pericardium contains a fluid which again uh, which again protects the heart like from any friction uh, and also helps in the proper function now we will come to the uh, structure of the heart human heart or a mammal heart has four chambers i repeat a human heart or a mammalian heart has four chambers the upper two chambers are called auricles and the lower two chambers are called ventricles they are separated by a septum and in between the uh, walls like in between the the auricle and the ventricle there are valves present which which provides a boundary now what are their function these chambers help in the passage of blood like the auricles receive the blood and then they send it to the ventricle the upper chambers like i said they are named auricles they are also called atria now they have thin walls why thin walls because their function is very limited like they only pass the blood from their chamber to the down to the to the downwards that is the ventricle so they need very little effort so they are made up of thin walls but ventricles have thick walls why thick walls now for example if i ask you to throw water at a huge distance you'll carry the bucket and you'll give a big force and you'll give a huge force to it why because you need more muscular power in order to throw the water at the given distance so similarly the ventricles what do they do they transport blood to all parts of our body now while transporting blood to all parts of our, of our body they need a huge muscle power this is the reason why ventricles have thick walls